LSD ist knallhart und kristallklar. LSD is uncompromising and crystal clear, which means not taking LSD can be just as much an escape of reality as a taking of certain substances sometimes can be. Or to express it the other way around, the taking of a certain substance to recognize oneself more clearly can mean an approach and opening up to reality when one specifically creates a condition in which the synaptic gaps allow one to realize a little bit more of oneself. Then the intake truly has a psychedelic effect. It expands the soul, it increases one's self-awareness. LSD is allowing us to have experiences, contrary to theories, contrary to reading something or explaining something scientifically. All these psychoactive and theogenic substances, Felix Hessler provided a good overview this morning of what they are called, their various names. Those substances are allowing us to experience experiences with ourselves, with our own nature and with the degree of interconnection of us and nature surrounding us and how intensely interconnected we are with an endless cycle of life of which we are only a tiny fraction. This experience has surely been not only for me, but for many of you here, enormously helpful and enormously health recovering, healing. And it is an experience which can even be healing if it drags somebody into horrifying depth, experiencing hell, experiencing terrible things, because LSD is not only showing the wonderful aspects of life, but it reveals the shadow aspects aspects as well. And it is precisely those shadow aspects which we have to confront. Everybody individually and every culture, every society, and the more global we become, the more crucial it becomes to recognize these shadow aspects of ourselves and notice, right, this is my personal contribution to this. And this is best recognized if we don't ask this question from the moral point of view, saying I am guilty or not, but if one is only realizing the personal part. And by recognizing, one can let go as well and can turn responsibly towards new tasks. LSD can unangenehm sein. Das kann sogar Angst machen. LSD can be uncomfortable, and this can cause even anxiety. But the truly decisive thing with LSD is that it shows us when things are going well. I'm going to explain how this can happen, and it demonstrates to us the unbelievable potential that we have within. When a trip is going well, well in quotations, in the sense of the state beyond the condition of the depersonalization every one of us is experiencing. I call it the qualities you suddenly experience, what an immense power, what an unbelievable potential lies within each one of us. And I tell you, because LSD is demonstrating that, you can leave out the past. You will, and I claim this to be the dangerous part of LSD, when you use LSD to work through the past, you will never move towards the potential. But if you do need LSD or any other kind of psychoactive substance to leave the past behind and to see, if I leave my history behind, you will suddenly experience the unimaginable potential, the qualities you possess. The sphere of the heart, the heart chakra, the activation of the energy of the heart isn't doing anything else but to provide you the opportunity to no longer be object oriented. The abstract self is not getting lost but moves into the background to be more space oriented, relating to that which is beyond my personal story. Ich sage, um das zu verbinden, 
I say, to connect that today, the worst myth created in the past hundred years is the idea that I can only love as much as I've received love. LSD and all psychoactive substances prove to us that this is not true. You may be an idiot. You may have beat up your wife the past day. And still, when the state of silence is created, you can get into a state of bliss and love, independent of what you are. What kind of social system can we develop which enables more of mankind to use these wonderful substances in a safe way? I realize many cultures and also our own society use psychoactive drugs. For example, I began my day today by taking a psychoactive drug called caffeine. As you probably all did as well. It changed my consciousness. And when I was hungry, my consciousness was in a certain condition. Then I ate and my consciousness changed again. Consciousness is constantly changing. Um, uh, I call it um, between functional and experiential. So uh, most medicine wants to have functional drugs. Like you take Prozac or an antidepressant or a stimulant, you go, the doctor gives you the thing and then you go, go home, you know, and do, do whatever, call me in the morning. <laughs> Um, but then, um, and some drugs are like that. Tobacco is kind of like that. But some, some psychoactive substances require that you stop doing what you're doing and sit down and look within and, and concentrate. <laughs> and uh, it goes into an altered state where you're not really quite in touch with ordinary reality. And the drug that we all know that does that is called alcohol. Alcohol is an altered state. So, um, I think the use of drugs has to be regulated. It's not just a question of prohibiting and legalization. Um, what kind of legalization? I mean, we have systems already for legalizing, which, by the way, that, the lack of that distinction means that uh, it's really difficult for medicine or therapy to accept MDMA or LSD as a therapy, because it's not a functional drug. You don't take LSD to function better like you would an uh, uh, antidepressant or something like that. You, 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 it's to time out. You need to take, give yourself time out. So, but in the case of alcohol, we found that we can, society can regulate um, alcohol uh, and the use of alcohol. And I think, a comb the, I think what would work best in, in, uh, in the long run is that um, uh, some kind of certification of competence were developed. Like, that was Leary's idea, like a driver's license or a pilot's license. You don't just get to fly in an airplane without knowing, being certified that you train to do it and know what you're doing. And uh, same with the car. You know? And so uh, you would have to show that you've been trained, that you, you know your way around, and you can handle yourself, you can take responsibility for yourself. You don't want to be a load of be in a situation where you can't take responsibility for you, though. And, um, um, in, uh, uh, and then you make the, the iris, you know, you make behavior associated with that um, illegal. You don't, it doesn't make sense to make a drug illegal. That's ridiculous. You make behavior illegal, and we do that with alcohol. We don't, possession and taking of alcohol is not illegal, but, Driving a car under is, is very illegal, and we all agree. We want that to be that way. I don't want drunk people driving on the road. And we also make it illegal to give alcohol to a minor, you know, a young person. And, and we all agree with that. We have no problem with agreeing to that, accepting that restriction. And you could imagine easily, I think the regulation of psychoactive substances of the experiential variety is easy, actually, and, uh, because we, we've done it successfully. And uh, the one last thing I would say is for that kind of use, uh, relatively open but regulated use of psychoactive drugs, I don't think it's going to happen until the war on drugs is turned off. The war on drugs as the larger context is insane and, uh, um, and immensely destructive um, of uh, 
of societal stability. So we have to work on all those levels simultaneously. I can't imagine people having cre licenses to do creative work with LSD while the war on drugs is going on, and people are being busted for, old, old sick people are being busted for taking a pain medication. <laughs>